solution, you're going to jump over with a chaining of three and then you're going to put five double crochets into each one of the gaps. So continue that on your own and we'll catch back up with you at the end of this revolution where we're going to make sure that you've done it right. Okay, so I've just chained my three. I'm coming near the end so I just want to double check. So going around the edge, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we got six so far. So that means that I'm safe. You're looking for a total of eight gaps. So we're just going to continue to do our five in a row on the actual chain area there. And again, the five is very critical for your next point because we've actually been working kind of in a circle. It's kind of looking like it's turning hexagonal, but it's the next revolution that you'll truly get it. So now let's count again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so then this gap here would be then eight. So we're going to finish it off with chaining of three to create that gap. And we're just going to uh, slip stitch into the top of the other piece there through and through and that'll complete that revolution. So we got two more revolutions to go. If I can just get this off. And we got two more revolutions to go and you can see it's almost like hexagonal but it's more circular at this time. And uh, now we're gonna start really getting serious and creating this, uh, the octagonal shape. Now what we're gonna do is we want the gap again to be in the starting point. So let's rotate our material, just like so. And so the gap is right in front of us, so which what we want right here. And now let's chain up our three again. So one, two, and three. And now this is kind of opposite what we just done before. You know how we concentrated the five of putting into the gap. We're kind of going to do it backwards now. So this counts as one of the of, of the double crochet. We only want two now into each one. So one and two. Okay. So there's one and two. And now we're going to concentrate, and it's going to be in the middle of all of these sections around that's going to create the actual turn point. So let's grab our material and go into the very first stitch that's available. So let's double crochet, let's go into the second stitch and double crochet and let's go into the third and the third one is where we're going to make the turning point. So we just did one in there, let's chain one okay, and let's go into that very same hole again, that very same stitch and voila you've just now created a bending in your material. So now you'll have two left over here so you had one, two and then this one was right in the center and then you got two more left for a double crochet. Okay, so now you're back into the gap again and we're only going to put two like, like we started in the very beginning. So two, so one and two double crochets and now you're back again to the next section. So one and two, get a normal double crochet and now the third one will get a double crochet. This is also typically called a V stitch as well. One chain and then into the same stitch. And that's creating a V if you can see that. And now we're just going to finish off that section. So you'll have two normal, then the V, and then two normal. And now we're back to the next gap again. Again, two. And I'm going to show that one more time and then I'll release you off and we're going to go to the next revolution which is our final. So let's go again. So the first one gets one double crochet, the second one gets one double crochet, and now the third one of it which is directly in the center will get a V stitch. So one double crochet, a chain, and another double crochet. So now you got your, your V. And now you got two more stitches left, so it's just a double crochet, and you're back to the gap. So keep repeating that. I'll catch you back up at the end of this revolution. We'll finalize it, and you can now start seeing that the actual octagon shape is taking effect. We're now coming close to the end of this revolution, and we just have this section here left to go. So what we need to pay attention to is our actual counting and where we finished, where we started to compare to where we finished off. So this is the second one over. The third one will get a V stitch. So one chain one and back into it and now this is what you're going to look at. So you can see here that when we chained up we kind of came up and it kind of looks like it's part of this area but it's really truly not. And so just like we've been working and putting the stitches into the actual area here, this one here appears to be coming out of the last stitch but you got to remember that it's not. So what you got to do is at the very last one you just have to put two stitches into the same area. Okay, so this is where you chained up, 
So just go right in there and put the final one up there because that here is supposed to be in the gap, if you understand. Okay, so now what we're going to do is then slip stitch to so go to the very top of this chain, just follow it up, going in, grabbing the material, pulling it through and through. So hopefully you got you understood that because you got to this chain is kind of like it's kind of like a pain I know but it's really critical that you get the right stitch count because if you mess up on one of these sides when you go to put these all together it won't actually line up properly. So let's go on to your next. Well this is the final revolution of my tutorial for this uh, particular octagon so we're just going to rotate and we're going to chain up three. Now you will notice if actually before I rotate it you'll notice that the corner point is over here and the other corner point is over here just like so. So this is actually when you go to turn you're actually in the half of a flat point if you understand. So let's rotate this like I said before rotate it around and now let's chain up your three. So one two and three and now going into the very next stitch available which is right there so do you see that going in and we can verify that at the end of this revolution because we want to make sure we're maintaining a stitch count so you're going to put one double crochet across this line until we get to the V shape so just go into the final one just before the V so this is the, la the last post before it turns into the V going into that one it's a normal double crochet and now what we want to do is we want to form another V shape into that same V. So grabbing the material, I know that sounded complicated, grabbing the material, pulling it through, pull through two and two, so that was one. Now let's chain one because you're turning a corner and going back into that same gap area. So now this is where I want you to start keeping count. The magic number is eight. It should take you eight stitches to get from here to the next V if you've done it right. So let's go. So this is considered one. So one double crochet. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I won't do that to you. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And see, this is the final one. So just right before you go into the V, this is the eight. So you're gonna have eight stitches on every side and it's important that you have the same stitch count on every side. Now we're gonna go into the V. So there, chain one, going into the V again. And now let's do another eight. So let's, uh, I'll just stick eight more with you. So make sure you understood that. So it's one, this is two. three, four, five, six, seven, and if we're right, yep, it is. So right on the last post. So I'm going to meet back up with you uh, when we get back around because it's going to look weird because you started in the middle of a flat spot. You got to make sure the stitch count stays the same. So let's uh, continue that on your own going into the V and we'll catch back up with you in the end where we will finalize and cast off. So you can see I'm coming up to the final revolution here and um, I want to show you what's going to happen when you actually get close and after the, the last V that you'll ever have to do on this. So let's get there in just a second. And you remember the magic number was eight. We already talked about that. So you have to keep that number in your mind. So as long as you can count to eight, you're good. So let's, this is the V shape. So let's do your final V of this particular one. So let's chain one and back in. Now, what you need to pay attention to here is let's just do one extra in so let's just start like as if you were going normal and now what we want to do is kind of keep count so if the magic number is eight let's look to the next v coming up so here's the next v we don't count the one that was in there as being part of the eight okay so just sip over to the next one so one two three and four okay we don't count the one that's in here so this is five and now let's go six 